Hello and welcome to a trigonometry video on the sine rule for angles. The sine rule is based on the idea that each angle of a triangle is closely related to its opposite side. Even when we name triangles there's a bit of this. When we have a capital A for the vertex of a triangle up the top there, its opposite side is named uh, lowercase a. If we have an angle of B, capital B, its opposite side is lowercase b and C, capital C, produces a opposite side of lowercase c and that's to uh, represent the idea that an angle produces an opposite side they're very closely related if this angle was bigger this would produce a longer opposite side and if that opposite side was smaller that would create a smaller angle in the opposite side of the triangle. So that's the basis of the sine rule. The larger side is always opposite the largest angle in a triangle and the smaller side is opposite the smallest angle. Happens every time. Okay, for any triangle ABC the sine rule for angles states that sine of angle A over side A equals the sine of angle B over its opposite side and the sine of angle C is over its opposite side. So on the diagram here, the sine of this angle over its opposite side, that relationship there, is equal to the sine of this angle over its opposite side and also equal to the sine of this angle over its opposite side. So those ratios of sine of an angle over their opposite sides are exactly the same in uh, each of the pairs of uh, sides and angles. For our calculations though we only really use the first two sections in our working. So we'll only use sine A over A equals sine B over B in working out any question. And on the top of our sine rule for angles that's where our angles go capital A and capital B they indicate angles and underneath uh, that's where the sides go so in both cases on the left hand side and the right hand side of the equal sign it's the angles or the sign of the angles on top over the sides on the bottom okay let's have a look at how we might approach this question here our first example find the value of theta theta is a symbol representing a missing angle or angles whose size, size we don't know yet uh, to the nearest degree. So let's have a look at the relationship between the angles here. We'll use that sine rule for angles we just got through talking about. Now what's related to the theta? That theta angle is closely related to its opposite, ang opposite side of 7.3 meters. So they're related and the angle of 70 degrees is related to the side that's opposite that. So 70 degrees or sine 70 degrees to be more precise uh, is really closely related to 8.9 meters so that's the basis of filling out the um, this particular sine rule for angles formula. Step one we always put our missing thing the thing we're trying to find out on the very top left of these arrangements for sine rule. So sine theta will go on the top left no matter what over its matching side. Now we can see from the diagram that the side that's matching the theta is that 7.3 there. So that'll go on the bottom. Then we have sine of the other angle. Now the other angle in our triangle is 70 degrees. So we'll have sine 70 on top right over the other side we haven't used yet which is uh, 8.9. And you can see that 8.9 and sine 70 are closely related. We've already decided that. Okay, so we've filled in the, uh, the sine rule arrangements for angles here. Then we have to find uh, theta in the end. So we will multiply to get sine theta on its own. Now to multiply to get sine theta on its own, we would want to be moving a 7.3 that is dividing. The bottom of any fraction divides into the top. So we want to be moving a dividing 7.3 to move something in algebra or solving equations is we need to do the opposite operation to both sides. So instead of dividing by 7.3 we'll need to multiply by 7.3 on the left hand side 
and multiply by 7.3 on the right hand side. Now notice I've, on the right hand side I've, I've made sure that 7.3 that's multiplying is on the top of the fraction. We need to do that each time. Now on the left hand side our dividing 7.3 and our multiplying 7.3 will cancel each other out which is what we want because we want to uh, get sine theta on its own. And so we'll get on the left hand side just sine theta which is what we wanted and on the right hand side we have that calculation of 7.3 times sine 70 over 8.9. Now we need to calculate our answer. Now we're finding an angle so I think you'll remember from your earlier work on sine cos and tan that when we're finding an angle we have to press shift sine cos or tan. In this case shift sine will help us work backwards to find the angle. So our calculator steps that can come in now involve we need to press shift sign and put that whole right hand side into our calculator carefully. When you press shift sign the calculator gives you a sign and a, an open bracket we'll type in the rest of that, we'll close the bracket and then press equals. So we just enter it into our calculator carefully and we'll get an answer of uh, theta equals 50 degrees. Now I've rounded that off to the nearest degree. So filling in our sine rule for angles format we started off with sine theta on the top left over its matching side. On the top right we had uh, the sine of the other angle over his matching side and we uh, multiplied to get sine theta on its own. And then it was a calculator situation. So you might notice from the, it's worth noticing from the uh, diagram though whether that makes sense or not, 50 degrees for theta. Now we had 8.9, a side length of 8.9 meters producing uh, or relating to 70 degrees. Now we've got a shorter side here, 7.3, producing our theta. So we would have been expecting theta to be less than 70 degrees. So our answer makes a fair bit of sense there. It's worth having a look to see if your answer makes sense because you might have done something wrong in the calculations. So theta equals 50 on our first example there. Okay, sometimes they get us to uh, sketch the triangle first. They won't provide a diagram for us, so we'll have to carefully sketch our uh, triangle first. And we'll have to work through this nice and carefully. In triangle WKR, the angle K is uh, 57 degrees, lowercase k, which is a side, 8.7 centimeters, etc. We need to find the size of angle R to the nearest degree. Let's see how we might do that. We'll be using our sign rule for angles, of course. Let's have a look. Now, the first bit that we have uh, that we're going to use is that we need an angle named K that is 57 degrees. So we'll draw a careful diagram before we start. So we'll make an angle there. We'll call it K and we'll label it with 57 degrees. Okay, pretty simple. Now, we'll also notice that the triangle is named WRK. Now we've used K, so the other two uh, ends there, the other two vertices, we'll make a triangle and we'll make the other two vertices, we'll name them W and R to produce that triangle, W, R, K altogether. So we're just naming the corners there. Now that'll allow us to then put 8.7 in. Now it's a lowercase k, which I said at the beginning of the video, should be opposite the uppercase k angle. So that's why we've put the 8.7 over there. Lowercase k will be opposite, we can expect in every question like this, to be opposite uh, the uppercase k angle. So that's where we're able to place that. Now we've got a lowercase r equaling 9.8 centimetres. Can you see where lowercase r might be? Yep, should be in the opposite side of, from the uppercase r. So that's where our 9.8 centimetres will go. All right, and theta is uh, the angle we're trying to find. We'll call theta. Could call it angle R if you like, but theta is what we use for uh, to indicate a missing angle. Okay, so that's in there as well. Now let's see which uh, side relates to which. That theta angle is related to his opposite side, and that 57 degree angle is related to his opposite side, 8.7. So they're the pairs of angles and sides that we're going to be using to fill in our sine rule for angles arrangement. Okay, sine theta on the top left over his matching side. We said that 9.8 was his matching side. 
Then we have sine of the other angle. Now the other angle we've got there is 57 degrees on the top right over his matching side which is 8.7 so we're putting them in that sort of arrangement there and we need to then multiply to get sine theta on its own. Can you see which number we might need to multiply by? We need to move that 9.8 that's dividing on that left hand side to allow sine theta to be on its own so we're going to multiply both sides by 9.8 okay then on the left hand side a dividing 9.8 and a multiplying by 9.8 will cancel each other out leaving sine theta on its own which is nice and the rest of that, uh, that, that calculation is on the right hand side and when we're using our calculator here, we're finding a uh, an angle, so we need to press shift sign at some point in time. So we type that carefully into our calculator and then press equals at the end. Now let's have a guess at what we might be finding. We had a completed pair of 8.7 being produced from 57 degrees. Can you see that 9.8 is a longer side? So we're expecting a theta to be a slightly larger angle than 57 degrees. Let's see if that pans out. Yep, 71 degrees there. So that makes sense. That uh, kind of matches our expectations there. Okay, so the only difference in that um, example is that we had to do some work at the beginning to draw the triangle carefully ourselves, one step at a time. Okay, here's a sine rule. It doesn't look like a sine rule at first. Um, it's a sine rule for angles, what I call, how I say, in disguise. Let's have a look. To use the sine rule, we really need two pairs of sides and angles, and we're allowed to have one missing side or angle out of the four items, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's hard to use the sine rule. Let's have a look how this one pans out. So, we're trying to look for two pairs of sides and angles. Now we've got one pair there, the 59 degrees and the 12 millimeters that's opposite it. Uh, that, that can be considered to be a pair. But if we have a look at the other angle, theta, there's nothing on the other side of the triangle. So we kind of have two out of the four items that we need. Uh, we, we could get away with three out of the four items and find the other item in sign rule but here we've got too many missing parts but what we can do if you notice we have a 10.6 on that other side uh, we can f choose to find its opposite angle first and we'll call that alpha that symbol there it's like a bit of an L. It's the first letter, letter of the Greek alphabet, that's alpha. And we uh, re revert to that symbol if we've already used theta in a question. We've already used theta down that left-hand side, the left-hand bottom corner. So we, we'll use a different symbol, because it's going to be a different size angle, most likely. Uh, there, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and find the size of alpha because we can't find theta directly but we can find alpha that if you have a look will then once we've found alpha we'll then have two out of the three angles on the triangle and we can use that angle sum of a triangle equals 180 to just subtract from 180 and we'll get to find theta in the end so it's a bit of a uh, I guess it's a long way around but if we can find uh, another uh, the two out of every three <laughs> two out of the three angles of the triangle we can uh, use that angle sum to in the end find theta which is what we wanted okay let's have a look how we do that let's pretend then that uh, alpha is the th is the missing angle we need we actually need that first so let's have a look we'll find we'll put sine alpha on top left we won't use theta just now we'll figure out theta in a different way so sine theta is on the top now what's the side that's opposite uh, sine uh, uh, opposite alpha is 10.6 so that'll go underneath we'll have sine of the other angle on the top right and the other angle is 59 degrees and the side that's related to that is 12 millimeters Okay, so that's our sine rule for angles set up there. We'll multiply to get sine theta on its own. Once again, we'll multiply by that bottom number there because that's the number that's dividing into sine theta. We'll multiply both sides by 10.6. That will cancel out on the left-hand side, leaving us with sine alpha equals 10.6 times sine 59 degrees, 12 minutes. Don't mind the school bell there. We'll press on. <laughs> Uh, and then that's a calculated job. We'll have to press shift sign because we're finding an angle and we type that right hand side in carefully and then press equals. Now let's have a look at what we might be expecting. Our alpha is opposite a slightly smaller side than we had 
for 59 degrees so I'm expecting a slightly smaller angle there let's have a look we got 49 degrees yep slightly smaller okay so that's alpha up the top very top of our triangle here we found alpha now we've got two out of the three angles on a triangle we can take them away from 180 degrees, so 180 minus 59 minus the 49 we found, and that should leave us with theta. Theta equals 72 degrees. So it wasn't your classic setup for sine rule, um, but if we can find any angle there, we found a, and that angle alpha, and that helped us use the angle sum of a triangle rule to finish our question off. So it was the long way around, but it's still possible to use the sine rule if it doesn't look like a classic sine rule setup. If you can use it to find two out of the three angles of a, a triangle, you can get there in the end anyway. All right, let's sum up the sine rule for angles. Sine A over A equals sine B over B. And that's because uh, the angles in a triangle are closely related to the length of the opposite sides in each case. And to use sine rule, we do really need in the end two pairs of sides and angles with only one missing item out of the four. And once we've got uh, that piece of information, we can uh, carefully draw a diagram if we need to, if it's not given to us. And then we go through those steps as illustrated in the, uh, in the three examples we had. So to use the sine rule, um, we can go with those two pairs of sides and angles. If we don't quite have that, that last example showed us that we can sometimes use the angle sum of a triangle equals 180 degrees to find a missing angle in the end anyway. So let's, we'll, we'll think that we can combine, we'll remember we can combine the sine rule for angles and the angle sum of a triangle and uh, find lots of angles that we need to. So I hope that, hope that helps. It's a bit confusing at times, but I've shown you each of the uh, examples that might come up in your studies, so I'm hoping that's a good guide. So uh, have a look over that video again if you like to clear up a few things, but their steps all, are all there and uh, I hope that's clear for you. So um, you can find some more great maths videos at peterblakemaths.com and uh, enjoy that and we'll see you next time for some more uh, trigonometry rules. Thanks. Bye-bye.